Danaher emphasizes two initial takedowns to learn for jujitsu, the ankle pick and the collar drag. And then Danaher's six criteria for choosing takedowns for jujitsu are back exposure, neck exposure, belt exposure, body weight exposure, roll through exposure, and degree of difficulty. BJJ has different rules and scoring criteria than judo and wrestling, so he says we should look at the risk versus reward for each throw and then adapt them to jujitsu accordingly. Danaher has a beautiful 40 minute video on how to choose takedowns for jujitsu. It's free and it's on YouTube, but I'll give you the Cliff Notes version of it after having studied it. Since I recently set a goal for 2024 to no longer pull guard in competition after having done 63 tournaments so far at Blue Belt to become a more well-rounded grappler and to stop losing matches because of takedown exchanges. When I first started this, I had the San Jose Open coming up as my first competition of 2024, so I had to figure out which takedowns to work on. And when my friend Jordan hit me with a nice hip throw during some light sparring, it kicked off my investigation into the world of judo. I talked to my friend Aton to figure out what Jordan had hit me with, and also what throws he recommends for BJJ, since he's a BJJ brown belt and a judo black belt. Hey Aton, what throw is this? Uh, that looks like ukigoshi. Is there any uh, risk of back exposure? There's always a risk of back exposure. Exposure. Therefore, the most important thing is the kuzushi, that concept of unbalancing your opponent. What do you think of the ogoshi and the ukigoshi for BJJ? Especially if someone grip you overhead grip, uh -huh. it's really easier to sneak them in. And would you prefer to do other throws first before you looked at trying the ukigoshi and ogoshi? As you know, I like the foot sweeps. Okay, so foot sweeps are good, but I heard they take a long time to master. And I only had a couple weeks left before the competition. So I thought I've had some success with collar drags in the past, so maybe I could start there. And for Nogi, I have no idea. Maybe I would just try to wrestle and not get guillotined. Well, to help answer some of these questions, I went back to a video I remembered watching a long time ago. Danaher showing Bernardo Faria how to choose takedowns for jujitsu. Okay, guys, I'm here with my friend Bernardo Faria, huge honor for me. So let's talk about his criteria for selecting takedowns. The first one is back exposure. In BJJ, even if you finish a throw that would otherwise end a judo match, you can still get your back taken. That's why you want to limit back exposure, like what happens with this common judo throw called seonagi. The next criteria is neck exposure. In wrestling, you can't get choked, but in BJJ, you can. That's why Danaher says you have to be extra careful with takedowns that involve you shooting into your opponent's legs and then putting your neck in a position where you could get loop choked, like in a single leg, or guillotined, like in a double leg. The next criteria is belt exposure. The belt wraps around your center of gravity and if the opponent can grab it, they can use it to help throw you, like in a sumigeishi during a single leg takedown. The next one is body weight exposure. This one's pretty self-explanatory. If your opponent can sprawl on you, that's bad news. The next criteria is roll through exposure. Again, in judo, you might be able to end a match where you end up rolling all the way through after the throw, but in BJJ, you'll just end up in bottom position. And the last one he talks about is degree of difficulty. A lot of throws in judo and wrestling look super clean and effective, but take a long time to master. So he suggests sticking with the options that are easiest to learn at first. Of course, there are many takedowns he discusses, but we want the cliff notes, right? So here are the ones that he emphasizes for beginners to learn within a time frame of just a few months. Danaher emphasizes the effectiveness and low risk nature of ankle picks, particularly due to their minimal exposure to counters. He also suggests collar drags as another suitable option, highlighting their effectiveness in redirecting an opponent's momentum and creating opportunities for advantageous positions. The cool thing about ankle picks and collar drags is they're also applicable from the ground in a seated position. He calls this the overlap principle between standing and seated. And so armed with my new knowledge and having practiced takedowns with all kinds of different training partners, it was time for the San Jose Open. In my first and only gi match of the day that I ended up losing, I was able to hit a collar drag to single leg takedown. Old reliable. I had to be extra careful though during the single leg finish because of possible neck exposure. So I tried to keep my head really high on his far shoulder and it worked. We haven't talked about nogi that much in this video, but during my first nogi match, I managed to hit a duck under. Actually, this happened because I was going for foot sweeps. And when I felt all of his weight going onto his far leg, I just ducked under and went to the back. I think this would still meet Danaher's criteria for a good takedown though, since it minimized all my risk and got me to probably the best position you could hope for on the opponent's back. Do you have any thoughts on how to adapt Danaher's principles though for nogi? Let me know in the comments. Despite these successes though, I still have a really fun time doing throws that are out of 
of these bounds, like the Seonagi, even though there's back exposure. I'm trying to find the best risk versus reward for BJJ, but at the same time, I just want to have fun and experiment. And so I was wondering, will I still be able to do that and still benefit my BJJ? Well, since all this, I've now started judo and have been experimenting in competition, not only with the old reliables like collar drags, but also risky turn throws like this drop Ipon Seonagi and this less risky sumigeshi that Tony Lettner actually showed us some great setups for at a judo seminar. All for the sake of becoming more well-rounded as a grappler. While I'm at BJJ class, I can work on adapting my judo for BJJ, but also maintain the integrity of judo and just focus on becoming proficient at that art in isolation while I'm at judo class. This is a long road, and I'll embrace the journey of continual learning and improvement, and just see where this takes me. And I hope you got something out of this too. Any thoughts on what we discussed? Leave a comment below. And if you thought this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you're curious to see some more judo throws in action, check out this video where I filmed an entire judo sparring class at the new judo gym I go to called CJ Judo run by Chuck Jefferson. Thanks for watching.